they play South Wales, don't they? But Alan uh, tweeted today that he was like still annoyed about the result like a day after and he never thought he'd get to that stage hey. um, with the old goal so that's good isn't it yeah, it's tremendous yeah final game of the weekend for League One then saw Whitehaven comprehensively beat the Coventry Bears 44 points to 12 so what does all that mean for the standings in League One Mark the Wolfpack go on top uh, on points difference ahead of fellow 100% side Barrow Raiders Oxford are the highest placed Southern side in ninth place after oh. the win over York fantastic into the NRL they're around 6 of competition play down under it was Brisbane Broncos 32 Sydney Roosters is eight. The Newcastle Knights were defeated at home 12 points to 22 by the Canterbury Banks Town Bulldogs. Yeah, Joe Wardle, I think it was his first start for the Knights, but James Graham was a star of the show. 230 metres, 42 tackles, no misses. Drop goal victory for the South Sydney Rabbit O's over in the, bl- the foot of the Blue Mountains. Penrith Panthers 20, South Sydney 21. Yeah, Tom and George Burgess both played but didn't really do that much, didn't play long minutes, but Sam Burgess did and he grabbed a try, 129 metres and 51 tackles. Manly Seagulls 10, St George, Illawarra Dragons 34. And keeping up the pressure... five, forgive me. Keeping up the pressure on uh, Williams and Gale was Gareth Widdett with a two-try performance. Yes, um, one of these tries was quite spectacular, wasn't it, Giddy Dan in goal? Didn't see any of it, sorry, I was away. Ball was dribbling, 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 and about to go out. The, the Manly player was trying to see it dead and would have just... Got around behind him and grinded the ball before rolling out of play himself. Uh, I only saw this next game. Okay, it was the Gold Coast Titans 16, Camera Raiders 42. Yeah, Josh Hodgson had a try assist and Elliot Wyatt was back from suspension with a try, try assist 114 metres. There you go, North Queensland Cowboys were beaten at home, surprisingly, by the West Tigers, 16 points to 26. Uh, New Zealand Warriors beat the Parramatta Eels 22 points to 10. And it was a low scoring affair as the Melbourne Storm were beaten by my Sharkies at Amy Park, 2 points to 11. Yeah, Gareth Widdop's Dragons have gone top of the table on points difference. Who'd have thought that after six rounds? The Sharks are up into the top four. Below them, it remains pretty close all the way down to the bottom, where the Tigers are replaced by Joe Wardle's Knights at the foot of the ladder. There we go. That is the world of Rugby League. Well and truly covered for this week. Let's take a look now into the future as we bring you our predictions for rounds nine and ten of Super League. Right, Mark, we're heading into Easter. It means a fixture pile-up, whinging about injuries and all that good stuff that we come to expect from Super League coaches. And the ultra crapshoot of tipping the Monday fixtures. Yes, superb. So, let's start with round nine then, and Wednesday, our early start for us. Um, I'm, tempted over... to, I'm tempted to go to this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I will be at work, otherwise I will join yeah. you. Yeah, it sounds like it, yeah. I'm tempted, I'll see how things land work-wise by Wednesday evening. Well, by this one, Mark means Huddersfield taking on the Catalan Dragons. Now, Catalan don't travel very well, but they did blow away Lee Centurions away from home last week. And I am starting to think that against this Huddersfield side, who, whilst they'll be slightly buoyed by their performance against St. Helens, certainly aren't putting together anything like an 80-minute performance yet, that Carla might come away with a cheeky victory. I'm going 18 points to 12 in favour of the away side, buoyed by the return of the now free Tony Giga. Yeah, and obviously he had a bit of influence on the side, um, coming back straight back in mm-hmm. this week. And um, I just think Huddersfield might have picked up some sort of spirit and momentum off the comeback mm. against St. Helens, but the story of that game's all been about St. Helens and... I'm not sure how Boyd Huddersfield actually will end up being by the time this game comes around. Catalan will be hanging around in the country. That might give them a bit of bonding time and that sort of stuff. It's never a, a bad thing. No. I think Catalan are probably going to go into this one on, on, the, on the better side of the momentum swing. So 24-16 for me for the visitors. Okay, Monday Thursday sees witness. Yeah, 12-18 in favour of the Dragons, I said. Uh, Monday Thursday sees witness taking on Warrington in the Cheshire Derby. I don't think it's going to be the greatest game in rugby league you've ever seen, but there'll be passion aplenty if only from the stands. Um, with this, however, for me, just could not buy a win at the moment. Uh, 16 points to 24. I'm going in favour of Warrington, based solely on Witness's poor form. Really. I don't even need to think about Warrington as an entity particularly. Witness have just been so poor that I think whoever they come up against at the moment in this vein, they're, yeah. going, to, they're going to struggle to beat. Uh, and Warrington are not flying high, even though they're coming off the back of that that first win of the season, they're not still not performing very well. Um, they'll definitely get the win if Depp Patton stays inside. That's 
without question for me. Um, and hopefully he does keep his place because I think he's a good player. Uh, witness just... Sorry, witness fans. They're just not offering anything at the moment that well, tells me they're going to win this game. Well, the buoyancy after the, the league game and then there was competition for places, there was players coming back to fitness, players coming back from suspensions or whatever, players coming back into availability, yeah. basically. And they were able to chop and change a bit witness. And I don't... It hasn't had the desired, desired long-term yeah. effect. It's clearly an outlier rather than the spark that gets their season. So I can't see that Warrington, who've now got a win on the board, mm. um, are going to be... Holding this one, it could be one of those ones where witness turn up and do pull off some sort of shocking result. Like, oh, yeah. do you remember a couple of years ago when was it three years ago now when Hep Cahill got sent off? Um, I think at Warrington and right. they managed to pull out a win uh, with some nice Joe Mellor skills. And I think was it Jack Owens had a good game, but mm. uh, I just it's not happening this time around. It's just difficult for me to pick that happening. Yeah, whilst it's it's in there in the ten percent realms of possibilities. I'm going to go 29-16 for Warrington. There you go. Okay, good Friday then. It's a traditional one. We're going to take on St. Helens. Down at the DW, I'm sure you'll agree with me that if there's a better time to be playing a good Friday derby than having just recently sacked your senior opposition coach, Sacks. I can't think of a better situation really for Wigan. Even though you guys are a bit patched up, I still see you getting a win in this one. I don't think Saints' heads are going to necessarily be in the right place and the prep that they might be able to do Moving into a Good Friday game may not be perfect, given the fact that they've just lost their head coach and their promise of these departures defensively. So I'm going to go for a 22 points to 10 victory in favour of Wigan. What say you? Uh, I'm going to say 28-14 in favour of Wigan. Mm. Cass is a bit worried that the change of coach will actually stir things up, and often that is seen to have an effect. I'm not sure how much it'll have an effect on this group. Mm. It, it, Saints, it's more dependent on whether Roby's fit or not than... Mm. the coaching change on, on how much they swing around but um, I'm hopeful that we'll have a couple more of the uh, important players back in the side that can change things up attacking wise for Wigan mm-hmm. and that's why I'm going to peg a victory for us 28-14 OK next up on Good Friday it is Castleford versus Wakefield it's another televised one of this both teams doing well and flying high and, and both performing perhaps a shade above expectations certainly Wakefield are Castleford Nominally less so, but still performing well. Um, I think at home, Castleford are just a different entity, though, and as good as Wakefield have been, I, I can't look beyond a Castleford result and quite a handsome one. I'm going for a bit of a blowout, 40 points to 16 in favour of the Tigers. Yeah, Cass score plenty of points most of the time, particularly mm. at home. I'm on a similar vein with you, 40 points to 20. Wakefield are playing well, but if you remember the game at Leeds, they were overawed a little bit by an occasion in a weird in a sort of way and maybe that'll be the same here mm, possibly so so over to Hull then on Good Friday Mark FC take on the Leeds Rhinos what do you reckon to this one tough one to call massively so but and Hull I would expect to bounce back somewhat from the last week but having seen them the two weeks before and not been very impressed overall with what I'd seen over that 160 minutes um, to now expect them to bounce back fully enough to be a lead side that I think have got some really good performers at the moment and whilst they were outplayed a little bit by Warrington between the 20s they were defensively resolute as Mm. well as you know have Cuthbertson and Parcel and if they don't make the errors that they made in the Warrington game should win I'm going to go 22-20 in favour of the visitors Right, I'm going the other way. It's, it's a tough one to call, though. I mean, I think Hull... <sighs> they've not been... In- well, they, there's been some inconsistencies there, but that's existed for Leeds as well. But I think maybe um, with the result against Warrington going against them, Hull will have had a rocky put up this week in terms of the work that Lee Radford will be getting them to do. Maybe they'll click a little easier. Um, I see it being a scrappy one. I see it being a close home win, 22-18 for me. Which takes us to the final game of the first part of Easter. Salford taking on Lee down at the AJ Bell. This should be a right humdinger. Salford playing some excellent attacking rugby on the back of some very strong work by their pack. Lee, too much in discipline, not coming out of the gates as well recently as they have been doing. I think they're going to struggle in this one. 30 points to 10 in favour of the Red Devils. 
I think there's a very good possibility that this becomes the uh, this overtakes last week's Lee Catalans game as the most penalties in a huh. in a game. Certainly. Um, although Gareth Hock will be missing it, won't he, for Lee? 36-16 in favour of Salford. I just think they're going too well against the Lee side that are working their way back into things mm. with you know the, the, their key man in Drinkwater yes. out of the fray. Yeah, there you go. Round 10 then on Easter Monday. Uh, 2.45 of the Sky game sees Wakefield taking on Wigan down at Bellevue. Mark, I'm going to tip against your Warriors just because Easter throws up some crazy results and I think Wakey... Um, I will do better at home, and I just feel it in my bones. I think let's go for it. Let's go controversial. Let's go for a slender away win, a uh, slender home win. Twenty-two points to eighteen. I've gone for I'm gonna different animal at home. Wakefield with with the second round of games at Easter, I always expect slightly higher scores, and then the the following weekend's game, I expect even higher scores usually. Mm. Um, so I'm going to peg a lot, pick a lot of tries in all these games. But if if Wigan can field a, a team with their attacking cogs in there I think we'll have we'll be able to put something on against Wakefield it, it really depends what we can put out and what Wakefield can rotate from their squad but 30 points to 24 I'm not going to back I'm not going to back against my boys am I there you go based on what I've said was going to happen in round 9 obviously I picked Leeds to get beaten I do think they'll pick themselves up and dust themselves down on Easter Monday when they take on the witness Vikings down at Headingley Again, predominantly because Widness just offer so little for me at the moment. So 30 points to 12 in favour of the Rhinos. I'm going to go 40 points to 18 in favour of the Rhinos. There I just think Leeds are, are going to be able to do a number at home on a on a low on confidence Widness side mm. on, on the on the suspicion that they'll lose to Warrington. There you go. Leeds take on Hull FC then. Um, like I say, I'm expecting Hull FC to, to respond to the Salford game and uh, maybe not come away with a massive victory here, but again, benefit from some lean discipline and come away with a 24 points to 12 victory. It's two experienced squads but limited in depth mm. and I'm not sure if that'll have a factor on this game. I think the second half in particular will be high scoring, but I'm just going to wedge it to Hull because I've, I've not seen much from Lee at the moment. Yeah. Um, so 30 points to 22 but it wouldn't shock me if Lee won that one. No. Um, Castleford must be rubbing their hands at the prospect of taking on St Helens' side in complete internal disarray on Easter Monday. 36 points to 14 in favour of Classy Cass. 34-20 in favour of Cass. Uh, I'm going. I think they will Yeah, well, they'll enjoy some nice open spaces on that totally wicked yes, they park. Will. Yes, they will. Warrington take on Huddersfield then down at the HJ. Um and hopefully they're going to make it three wins out of three. I suspect they will do. Huddersfield, again, uninspiring and showing some real defensive lapses. They are hoping to have Jake Mamo in the squad. What difference that will make? Well, he's been named in the squad for the Hud- for the Catalan game, I Perfect. believe. Yeah. So there you go. So he's more than likely going to play. Um, maybe he can add some spark to those guys, but I suspect Warriors are going to be far too strong for this average-looking Huddersfield outfit. 36 points to 12. This will be a bit of a drubbing, I reckon. Uh, 34-16, yeah. Oh, Warrington, key for Warrington is the ball sticking hmm. and last tackle play has been yeah. improved. Now, the last tackle plays took a big step up last week than they did the week before. Um, and so it just remains the cutting out the errors. But, but Huddersfield will give you the opportunity, I think, at the moment, the way they're going. Hmm. Absolutely. Final game of the Easter weekend then comes at tea time on Easter Monday. The Caroline Dragons take on the Salford Red Devils down in the South of France. Um, look, four or five weeks ago, I'd have picked this in favour of Catalan, um, but they're missing some key personnel. And Salford have really kicked on and started playing this this brand of rugby league that we've been talking about throughout the show. I'm going to go with an away win. I'm going to go with Salford to win 28 points to 16. I've switched up on this one. I'm going with a home win, and there's two factors around it. Looking at the Catalans 19 for the Huddles, Huddersfield game, they've, they've put in an element of rotation with a couple of players on the bench there's a, a young lad in the 26 jersey who wasn't named in the starting squad so mm-hmm. um, so that's a, a new one sorry on the season starting squad but that's, that's a new one on me um, and playing on Wednesday they've got till Monday to recover yeah. Salford are only playing on Friday I'm surprised they didn't push for their game to be a Thursday night kick off I, I, if I'm honest mm. and give themselves an extra day's recovery Oh, do you know what? I think you might have just come up with an absolute... Bout 30 points to 26. I expect it to be high scoring, mm. but 
I'm going to give the edge in the energy battle on this one to, to Catalan. Yeah, clever man.